Hi, my name is Amit Kumar and I am a junior research fellow at the Department of Business Administration, University of Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, India. I am here to present the classic work uh, that was written by Hesiod, uh, titled as Work and Days. Uh, actually, this is an epic poem of uh, 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 this is an epic poem of around uh, 800 or 828 verses. Uh, originally, this work was written by Hesiod in Greek language, but uh, in English it has been translated by Hugh G. Evelyn White. So. Every beginning is difficult, holds in all sciences. Uh, this uh, statement was written by Karl Marx in his famous work Das Kapital in the preface to the first German edition that was published on 25th July in 1867. Uh, through this slide uh, statement, I want to convey the message that since I'm a beginner, I may make many mistakes, uh, and uh, uh, this is why I want to request all of my viewers to kindly forgive me for my mistakes, and uh, at the same time, I uh, request all of you to kindly point out those mistakes to me so that I can correct them, uh, and the same are not repeated in the next videos to be uploaded. So, before we get into this epic poem, uh, we better understand the background of this poem, which is divided into two parts. First is uh, related to the socio-economic structure of Greece uh, during those centuries, and the second part of this background is related to Hesiod himself. The Work in Days is a didactic poem written by Hesiod. It is didactic uh, in the sense that here, Hesiod teaches some moral lessons to his brother Perseus. Uh, it was probably written around uh, 700 before Christ, uh, but at some places I have found uh, written that 800 before Christ. But whether it is uh, 700 or 800, uh, let it be. Hesiod is a Greek poet or writer and the first authority of agricultural practice, and this is perhaps the reason that he is also called the first economist of the world. Uh, in his appearance, he is a moralist and religious writer. The poem may have been uh, written against a background of an agrarian crisis uh, in mainland Greece, which led to colonies in search of new land. Why these colonies uh, went in search of new land? What happened actually there? Actually, by the middle of the 8th century, uh, the society structure of Greece had come under immense pressure, and the polis uh, means city or state. Uh, in Greek, uh, polis, uh, from this uh, word polis comes the word politics. So the polis means the city or the state was at risk of collapse. Three distinct pressures developed for each stratum of archaic society, the farmers, the aristocracy and the commoners. By 700 before Christ, these pressures became impossible to reconcile due to an explosive growth of population of about 4% per year. These three factors were in many ways connected, uh, connected and tended to reinforce one another. Greek farmers who already lived under a subsistence lifestyle and were frequently subject to crop failures, Hesiod wrote of many different circumstances that could befall an archaic Greek farmer, all of which would force him to borrow goods from his neighbors, failure to pay back these goods to uh, these goods could lead to loss of the farm they had and indebtedness or even enslavement due to the sharp increase in population arable farm land which had always been scarce became insufficient to support all the people in Greece and unfortunately between 750 to 600 before Christ in Greece which was marked by widespread famines and by 600 before Christ Almost all of the farmers in Athens had been dispossessed of their property and worked as slaves on the same. So uh, these are different reasons uh, which uh, made these colonies to go in search of new land. And the second part of this background is related to Hesiod himself. 
A dispute has been shown between Hesiod and his brother Perses over the distribution of his father's land. Hesiod's work on days is in fact an advice to his brother Perses, who appears to have bribed the corrupt judges to deprive Hesiod of his small inheritance and is content to spend his time in idle pursuits. As I have already told that Hesiod is a religious writer, so he has used so many gods and goddesses uh, uh, in his work. And the first of them are the Muses of Pyria. Who are these Muses of Pyria? The Muses are the nine daughters of Zeus and Menemosin. Menemosin was a titan goddess of memory and remembrance and the inventors of language and words. Zeus came to Menemosin on nine consecutive nights and the nine daughters were the result of those nine unions. Menemosin gave birth to nine girls near the topmost peaks of Mount Olympus. According to the poet Hesiod, the muses came frequently in Mount Helicon and the area around Mount Olympus known as Pyria and that's the reason because of their frequent present at this place they were given the name of Muses of Pyria. These Muses were the goddesses of music, song and dance and the source of inspiration to poets um, in many centuries. Uh, they were also goddesses of knowledge who remembered all things that had come to pass. In the opening lines uh, of uh, Work and Days from 1 to 10, Hesiod invokes them and says, O Muses of Pyria, come hither, uh, tell of uh, Zeus your father and chant his praise. Who is Zeus? Zeus was the god of the sky and ruler of the Olympian gods. Zeus overthrew his father Cronus. He then drew lots with his brother Poseidon and Hades. Zeus fortunately won the draw and became the supreme ruler of the gods. Uh, he was lord of the sky, the rain god. His weapon is a thunderbolt which he hurls at those who displease him. He is married to Hera but is famous for his many affairs. He is also known to punish those that lie or break oaths. In the first ten lines, Hesiod invokes the muses and asks them to glorify. Uh, their father Zeus and he also tells the power of Zeus who according to poet Hesiod can do anything and ensures justice in the world. Hesiod threatened Persis to be righteous lest he should incur the wrath of Zeus. The third of uh, these gods and goddesses is, is the goddess Iris or Strife, the eldest daughter of Dark Knight, Nyx, is said to have two characters, one is beneficial to mankind and another is harmful. In the next 11 to 24 lines, Hesiod tells about Iris. In Greek mythology, Iris is known as the goddess of strife and discard. According to Hesiod, Iris is said to have two sides, one being cruel, fostering evil and war, while the other as the eldest daughter of Dark Knight, who is steers up even the shiftless to toil. This means she encourages even lazy people to work. The first is considered to be blameworthy while the other is praiseworthy. Further, it is said to have two daughters. One, Dysnomia is said to personify lawlessness, the disruptor of civil order. The other is Eunomia, she who ends a strife. Work with work upon the work. Uh, what a fun line uh, written by Hesiod. In the above lines, uh, Hesiod exhorts his brother person not to be mischievous in earning livelihood. He should work and arc and not involve bad people in deceiving common men and seize their wealth. Hesiod warns his brother person that even if he has succeeded, and deceiving him with the help of the corrupt judges in the distribution of uh, inheritance first time but he would surely not get the second chance to do the same trick at me khan in the above lines uh, from 42 53 uh, 42 to 53. Hesiod has very well explained the scheme of creating and sustaining life by God. Since God has kept hidden our needs, which can only be taken by putting required efforts, but at no time. We are creator of those needs, but only discoverer, inventor, user, or imitator. Actually, uh, I found this thing uh, in uh, Plato's Republic. Uh, Plato wrote in his Republic that only there are only three types of arts, the art of discovery or the art of inventing, 
the art of user uh, using and the art of imitating so there are only three types types of arts according to Hesiod Zeus in his anger hid it because Prometheus witfully stole fire from Zeus for man who is Prometheus uh, Prometheus was one of the Titans uh, Prometheus was presented to be the protector and benefactor of mankind in an event called Trichadmicon, he treats Zeus. Uh, during the Titanomachy, the war between the Titans and the Olympian gods, Prometheus sided with Zeus. Means uh, he, uh, he was in the group of Zeus, helping to overthrow the old gods, means Titans, uh, Kronos, the father of Zeus. Siding with the winning side, Prometheus avoided being punished with the rest of the Titans and was therefore not sent to Tartarus. Tartarus was an underworld place where ferocious monsters and horrible criminals were banished or where the gods imprisoned their rivals after a war. So, in an event called Trick at Mekon, he treats Zeus by asking him to choose between two offerings. Beef hidden inside an ox's stomach, something pleasing hidden inside a rappling exterior, or bones wrapped in glistening fat, something inedible hidden inside a pleasing exterior. Zeus chose the latter and hence a precedent was created in what humans could sacrifice from that moment. So they kept the meat for themselves and sacrificed bone to the gods. So because of this reason Zeus uh, became uh, angry of uh, Prometheus. He was infuriated and decided to hide fire from mortals as punishment. Prometheus, in an effort to help humanity again, managed to steal fire back and give it to humans. The creation of women as a curse. Uh, Hesiod uh, says that the first woman who came in the world came as a curse. Uh, Zeus threatens uh, Prometheus that he is going to send a woman named Pandora as a curse to mankind who would be the cause of our destruction means the, de the destruction of mankind and then Zeus orders Hephaestus to make a woman with water and earth who will be like immortal goddesses in face. He also asks Athena to teach her some needlework and weaving of different kinds. The golden of Aphrodite gives grace upon her face and cruelty in her heart. Hermes is charged with the job of making her deceitful and shamelessness. They all obeyed Zeus and the woman was thus created. So, uh, all types of sickness and sorrows came with this woman in the world. The Zeus sends her as, uh, her as a gift to Epimetheus. Epimetheus uh, by Argus. Uh, though Prometheus had warned Epimetheus not to take any gift from Zeus, but being scared of doing some harm to mankind, he takes her as he as his wife and accepts misfortune men used to live in serenity peacefulness and they were free from all types of sickness and hard labor but when the woman took off the char uh, which was uh, given to pandora by zeus then all types of sorrows came to mankind in different forms so this is the creation of women uh, in Hesiod's working days who came as a curse in the world. So we will meet uh, in the uh, next part of this uh, Hesiod's working days where uh, Hesiod uh, tells about the five generation of men and uh, till then uh, bye but uh, before uh, in the last uh, part of uh, Hesiod's working days I will uh, present the uh, all the sources of information I have uh, where I have taken this information I will uh, present the sources so if any of you have any uh, uh, objection to it uh, kindly write to me uh, on on my email ID uh, 
and I will reply but I assure again that all the sources will be uh, written on the last slide of the last presentation of SEO's work and days till then bye